Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Pro Football Doc podcast. Welcome to the post week two heading into week three podcast. And of course, our new host, Thomas Casale here. And this will make my life so much easier, Thomas. I can just go with you and you can ask your questions and uh, drive what's going on. I'm not a real podcast producer or writer, uh, but it'll be fun as we discuss some injuries. And we certainly had a busy weekend, huh, Thomas? Yeah, I mean, week one, I think it was, you know, uh, for in terms of major injuries, not not a ton. But boy, did that change in week two, especially if you play quarterback. Uh, a lot of big quarterback injuries to discuss uh, this week, Doc. Uh, I know you were busy all Sunday running around looking at the videos. Uh, so l- l- why don't we jump right into it? Well, uh, one note I'll say is I wasn't as busy as I should have been. I mean, because of the, we had a, we had a bit of a <laughs> bit of a technical difficulty for the first couple hours. Well, I, I did hear that we weren't the only ones. I mean, there was a lot of, but other people were more just red zone difficulties and isolated difficulties. I would have thought we would have had difficulties week one, and but we didn't. But week two, uh, yeah, and that's why uh, you probably the guys following or listening here or watching i put out a lot of pleas of help me out with video <laughs> help me out with video there was a lot of things we were doing and and we always knew we were video dependent uh for our information because that's our source information but uh i guess i've forgotten how dependent we were and let me tell you direct tv big screen video where i can choose the replay and scan everything versus whatever is clipped to twitter I mean, it's way better just to be able to pick what we wanted. But anyways, sorry for that sidebar, but uh, hit me, Thomas. Yeah, Tell us good and bad. And what did I do wrong? Uh, ask that, that, questions. Be the just, so, just so people know, in the future, we, we got a lot of things coming. But one of the things we plan on doing is kind of showing Doc on Sunday and how he breaks down this video. And it's a very interesting process. So we will have that coming uh, soon, too. But let's get into the injuries, Doc. I mean, it was like every time we turned around, there was a quarterback down. A big one in Miami. Uh, Tua gets injured, uh, hurts his ribs. Uh, to me, that feels like that's that's a tough one for a quarterback. What do you see in there? Well, there's no question a rib injury is tough for a quarterback, right? Because why? It's not just, oh, he's got to be careful and wear a flak jacket and not take a shot. All the intercostal muscles and oblique muscles insert. Try throwing a ball without twisting your torso. It doesn't happen. I mean, there's no way that happens. You cannot throw a ball without twisting. And not to mention that it hurts to breathe, right? So a flak jacket doesn't help your breathing. A flak jacket doesn't help it. I think flak jackets are overrated. Yes, you want them, but therefore you got a rib fracture and you don't want the fracture to do displace and puncture your lung. They're not for getting you out of pain. And how do you get out of pain? Either you suck it up and bite the bullet. You can't take narcotics, cannot, because you can't cloud your judgment and slow your reaction time as a quarterback. So what we commonly do is rib blocks, you know, et cetera. So look, by video, Tyrod, sorry, we'll get to Tyrod Taylor a second. Tua, rib injury is likely rib cartilage. Why is that? It wasn't a direct blow if you watch the video. He got hit on the right and folded up onto the left and landed on. He was clutching at his left ribs. It was painful enough that he was carted off as opposed to walked off. Uh, Rib cartilage injuries do not show up on x-ray. Tom Pelissaro said x-ray is negative. That doesn't mean he's out of the woods. Rib cartilage injuries can be more painful than rib fractures even. So on the one side, and I'm not trying to go soliloquy here, it is way more common than fans think. Philip Rivers has given me permission to talk about this, but he played through rib fractures at least a handful of times throughout his career. And that's rib blocks before games on multiple occasions. I'm saying five different times, multiple rib blocks that played through and people never even knew about it per se, uh, or it was listed at ribs that he was not practicing, but playing through. So that's fairly common. Rib cartilage, which is something that doesn't show up in x-ray, which is why they're getting an MRI. The cartilage can be dislocated at the junction between the hard and soft ribs. 
or it, the cartilage itself can fracture. And because the cartilage doesn't have blood flow like the bones, it actually takes longer to heal. So uh, Jacob, I think you said that uh, Brian Flores or Schefter just said, Brian Flores said day to day for Tua. Yeah. I'm not buying it. There's no way Tua will be better on a day-to-day -day basis. This is going to linger. The question is, when can he come back and play? Let me tell you, if it is rib cartilage, which is my worry, there is no way that he's going to play or practice without a rib block injection, okay? Now, why would he get not get a rib block injection? In they were commonplace back in my day, you know, the old, when I walked uh, five miles uphill through the snow both ways to and from school, right? You know, old school thing. But I do see in this last year since the Tyrod Taylor incident mm -hmm. with the quote punctured lung from the rib block that players used to, I think 95% of the time take the rib block. If you look, I don't know that they do. Look, Amari Cooper was end of the game. Daryl Henderson was a little bit end of the game. I don't know that you see it as often anymore. And so, and also rib cartilage is harder to block. So maybe it wasn't an option for Tua, but here's the issue. Even if he takes a rib block, as do Miami Dolphins fans, does Brian Flores trust the young quarterback Tua to play on Sunday with a rib block if he doesn't practice? This is why I think if I have to look in the crystal ball, he's going to miss some time. This is not Tom Brady. This is not Philip Rivers. This is not Aaron Rodgers. I mean, those guys cannot practice and play. Could Tua actually not practice and play and have any confidence? Or are you better off just practicing Jacoby Brissett and playing Jacoby? And, and, and not know, you, you get what I'm saying? So with yeah, that- Yeah, so one I, of the, I, one of the yeah, things that's interesting to me is that they got a big game this week, weekend against the Raiders in, in Vegas. And it's, the line is four points. That tells me one of two things. One, the odds makers don't think Tua's playing or two, they don't, they don't really see a big difference between Tua and Brissett because you know the Raiders unbeaten only lay in four points, and you think that Brissett is probably probably going to get the start there. Do, do you think a healthy Brissett is better than an injured Tua for the Dolphins right now, given his injury? Well, let's put it this way. I try and judge injuries. I have my opinions about players. No, I don't, mean, not why, yeah, I don't mean talent-wise. I'm just talking about with that, with that, the way you're describing the injury, do you think Jacoby Brissett being a pretty good backup um, might be a better option health-wise than Tua? Look, I expect Brissett to be the starter at this point in time based on the way the injury happened and the rib cartilage injury, but also based on the fact that, look, would you rather have Tua not practicing taking a pregame injection and playing and pinning your hopes on him or Jacoby Brissett practicing all week and just saying we're riding with Jacoby, right? I think that's what's going to happen. Let me tell you, even if you can do the rib block and Tua chooses to get it, you're not blocking him to practice on Wednesday, practice on Thursday, practice on Friday, right? And of course, if there's a lung issue at all involved, he won't be able to fly to the game. And I don't think there will be a lung issue. But that factors into the equation at all. I think there's a chance Tua doesn't travel. I mean, okay. I think it's going to be Jacoby Brissett. Now, Thomas, if you think that moves the line or you followers are listening, let me tell you, I would plan on not having Tua this week. And let me tell you, it wouldn't shock me if they came out and said he's going to miss even a little more than that. Obviously, Flores is playing it close to the vest. You know, heck, he's already violated the uh, Bill Belichick school, right? By saying it's day to day, Belichick would say, we'll let you know on Wednesday, right? right? And Thomas, you know that you worked yeah. in New England. Uh, he wouldn't say a word. So, right. <laughs> so uh, you know, Flores is saying something, but it's not going to be, uh, it's coach speak, right? We know that. Okay, well, let's move to another team that has a starter backup quarterback question. <laughs> uh, you know, Andy Dalton, I'm not saying Bears fans were rooting for an injury, but they all want to see fields in there. Andy Dalton, right knee, uh, team says early diagnosis is a bone bruise. 
Uh, they think he avoided ACL tear, which is interesting because you thought from the video initially, you, you know, you said it might be ACL. And the fact that they were looking at that says that, you know, they were concerned as well. Do you think he starts this week or is it time for Fields in Chicago? Well, it's Justin Fields time. I don't care what Matt Nagy says. And he couched his words. Andy Dalton is the starter if he's healthy. He knows he's not going mm -hmm. to be healthy. In the best, and we'll talk about that in a second. But what does that do, Thomas? This allows you to go with Justin Fields yeah. and say, it's early for Justin Fields. I didn't want to. Dalton wasn't healthy. It allows the team to have confidence to go back to Dalton. It allows if he goes away from Justin Fields in another week, two or three, Hey, you're not being demoted, Justin. We were you. Thanks for stepping up sooner than we wanted you to. We're still confident in you being our future. Let me go back to Dalton. Look, let's go to back to Tyrod Taylor. Yep. Last Tyrod year. Taylor same, had a real thing happen. Justin with, Fields with came. Justin Fields. Justin Herbert came in. Same thing. Yep. Yep. And initially, what did the coach say? Anthony Lynn said, Tyrod Taylor's Tyrod job. Taylor's as soon as he come back, it's Tyrod yep. Taylor's job. But on the back end, as Justin Herbert kept doing well, it's like, well, take your time. Yeah. <laughs> we want you 100%. And it's another week's look, another week's look. And then by the time you got to four weeks, like, sorry, Tyrod, you know, uh, I changed my mind, right? That's just the way that works. But let me tell you why I think Andy Dalton is out. You absolutely can say that I was wrong so far in that it's not a complete ACL tear. But I didn't say that. A, we were operating on Twitter video. I said, the mechanism is consistent where it would make me worry about potential ACL. And I said that knowing that Dalton had already come back into the game and taken a few snaps. So I was certainly going out on a limb there, but I really think it was, it wouldn't shock me if the MRI came back partial and the bone bruise that Ian Rappaport talks about is consistent with an ACL. In other words, the knee shifted and that's what I saw, but the ACL hopefully held and did its job, but also the, Bones bruised. Now, how do you get a bone bruise non-contact? Because it's not someone hitting his knee. It's the femur, end of the femur, jammed against the end of the tibia. And the ACL helps to stop it. And because the bone took the force, the ACL took less of the force and was spared. So it's still along the lines of what we were talking about. And I was never making the firm ACL call. But let's say it's a good case scenario of just a bone bruise. Do we remember George Kittle? I mean, that was a month, mm -hmm. right? I mean, partial ACL, Sam Ellinger, a month. It's Justin Fields' time. Yeah. Book it. Now, how is he going to do? It's all like the, the most popular spot on any team is the backup quarterback, right? Especially when you're coming in with specialty packages. Now a team gets to prepare for Justin Fields uh, uh, for the whole week. And it's not just packages. It's not just a relief pitcher for a change of pace. It is nine innings of baseball from the starting pitcher, or in this case, the starting quarterback. It's different. It's harder. So we'll see what happens. But I firmly believe it's Justin Fields' time based on the injury situation. Yeah, and you're, uh, you're com you, you comparing it last year to the Chargers is right on the money. They gave Herbert some time to, so they could look at him. Then, then at that point, the, the, the locker room knows, everybody knows who your starter is, and it's an easier transition to the rookie. Um, okay, now let's move on to somebody who, you know, there's a couple guys who feel like they're on the list every week, right? And <laughs> poor Carson Wentz, back again, um, ankle, possibly both ankles. They got a big game this week against the Titans. Is he going to make it? Uh, I think he will. Um, the video looked a hot mess, right? And mm -hmm. Aaron Donald, I mean, Aaron Donald and Carson Wentz, like, were intertwined, <laughs> you know. Right. And I could see how he got both ankles. It was a very awkward situation. The good news is Carson Wentz looked more mobile than in week one. I thought he was better this week, right? And so that's good to know. But now I understand why he couldn't come in. It's one thing to favor one ankle and come in. We saw the right ankle. And we knew it was the left foot head surgery. But if it's a little bit both ankles, literally, you don't have a good leg to stand on. I can understand why uh, Jacob Eason came in, but he threw a pick his first time in. I think the Colts are going to do everything possible to get Carson Wentz ready to go. 
maybe they'll change the game plan a little bit to have less boots and RPO stuff and whatever. But look, a pocket Carson Wentz has to be still better than Jacob Eason, right? I mean, so I think they're going to get everything, do everything they can to get him out there this week. It depends on the swelling, but I'm cautiously optimistic. Now, how will he play is a different story. Obviously, big game, as you say, against the Titans. But Doc, let me ask you real quick. You worked in the NFL. Um, and obviously, you know, if somebody can't go, he can't go. But if it's on the fence, is there a difference if you're 2-0 and or 0-2, like the Colts are? Well, I don't know that you've heard me say this since you're new with us. And we love the attitude that you bring in all your experience. And maybe you've heard me say this before from afar. Return to play is always a three-headed monster. In some ways, it's like the president, Congress, and the Supreme Court right? If the president and Congress pass a law and sign it, the Supreme Court can still strike it down, right? I mean, you need all three to go, like, uh, to agree. They, that's sort of the checks and balances. And in football, who are the three? It's the player, medical, and the team. And let me define that. The player, the player, the wife, the dad, the mom, the agent, Mm -hmm. different voting authorities, ultimately the player, medical, ultimately the team physician, but the athletic trainer, the physical therapist, the second opinion surgeon, the consulting, uh, lots of different things, but the medical has a vote. And the team, the head coach, the position coach, the ownership, hey, let's just park Jimmy Garoppolo a little bit. Let's see what the other guys can do at the end of the season last year, even though he might be able to go, Hey, the QB coach saying, Hey, or the head coach saying, we really need our guy at hundred percent next week. If he's 90%, I'd rather go with the backup or let's protect him from himself, et cetera. Like, and we'll get to it like Odell Beckham. And we talked about that. And then the player, so it has to be unanimous. If Think about it this way. If the player says, I want to go, and I think I'm ready, and the team says, yeah, we want him to go, and medical says he can't go, he's not going. If the player says, I'm not sure I can go, but medical says you're okay, and the team says you're okay, he's not going because the player says, I'm not sure I can go. If the player and the doctor says, let's go, and the team says, ah, let's wait a week. We've got divisional games coming up. We have a bye coming up. Let's just rest till you're 100%. Three-headed monster, which makes predicting up-downs very hard. We have the medical component, but there's two other components in there. Okay. Um, well, let's move, Doc, let's move to Cleveland, okay? Because okay. they were a popular... No, let's not move to Cleveland. No <laughs> Yeah, let's, let's roll. move on to Cleveland. Hall of Fame. Yeah, Hall of Fame. Yeah, yeah. You, you, I like you, Cleveland. I don't want any text but, emails. But I, I don't I think too many Cleveland. people are going to compare Cleveland and San Diego. So <laughs> the, <laughs> that, that's, an, that's an easy one. But, the, you know, the Browns were a popular Super Bowl pick heading into the season. And I don't think that's changed after the first two games. But injuries popping up here. Baker Mayfield, left shoulder, Jarvis Landry, left knee, and we still haven't seen OBJ. What do you, how are you analyzing the Cleveland injury? Uh, First of all, don't sleep on this Baker Mayfield injury, okay? He subluxed, dislocated his left shoulder. If that were his right shoulder, his season is done, likely. That was his left shoulder on an interception tackle, reached out. He went in the locker room, put a brace and harness on, Cleveland fans have to give him some props. He's tough. He came back to play the same game. I do believe he will finish the season. Trevor Lawrence played through college seasons like that. Mitch Trubisky played through a Chicago Bears season with his non-throwing shoulder. But this is a big deal injury for for Baker Mayfield, and uh, he'll but he'll be able to play through, I believe. And everyone forgot about it because he came in the game and finished the game, etc. Jarvis Landry, I think I think they said week to week, correct? Officially, week week, yeah. Kevin Stefanski's with the brace. With the brace, confirmed with an MCL. First of all, right off the bat, how many speedy ride receivers can play with a brace and play effectively? Like zero, right? I mean, very difficult. Uh, even though brace technology's gotten better. Early on, even though we didn't have video in the room, we saw enough Twitter video that we said he had an MCL sprain. 
and we posted at Pro Football Doc that he's not coming back. I think it's very, very, very unlikely that Jarvis Landry can play this week because MCLs leave you, take away your ability to cut. I think they're going to arrest him at least this week, if not two. I'm not saying he's going on three-week IR. So the more interesting question is Odell Beckham. How does that change? Now, you and I talked about it on the podcast last week, and I don't know if you know this, but Odell actually DM'd me afterwards and said, hey, you're absolutely right. You get it, whatever. And he said it was like the heart. I'm paraphrasing. I could, If you want, I can read the DMs. He, he told me not to, to talk about part of it, but the first part of the DMs he said was fine. He said it was the hardest decision he had to make to sit out. And remember what we said is he did the bigger, better thing for the team because he wasn't 100%. He agreed. He says the hardest decision he ever had to make to sit out. He cried afterwards. And so this week, it wasn't a setback that the Browns ruled him out earlier. The Browns were doing him a favor. Odell, we're not putting this on you this week for week two. We're just going to rule you out. So you don't go through the emotional roller coaster that you went through last week because he cares so much. That wasn't a setback. Now this week, where is it going to shake out? Odell knows he's needed. He's a couple weeks closer. And now they have a hole. I think this might be the tipping point where he now tries to play, even if he's not 100%. Because now the argument is, Odell, and Odell will make the argument, I'm no longer hurting the team at less than 100%. I'm helping the team because the team really needs me, even though I'm less than 100% because of Jarvis. So that's why I think the scales tip. Those are some of the decisions that go into it. So I think Odell is going to suck it up and want to play and play it less than 100%, but he's going to say, now I'm not hurting the team. I'm helping the team, so let's go. Uh, that's what I think we'll see. Okay, and the Browns currently seven and a half point favorite over the Bears. That's going to be a six score specialty this week. And for those of you new, new to, to us listening for the first time, uh, make sure you go to profootballdoc.com every week at profootballdoc on Twitter to see our unique grading system for team health called the six scores. Um, those will be up uh, Saturday, Doc, for the Sunday games. Oh, yeah, more and more, right? We're, we're creeping in Saturday for the Sunday at least 24 hours in advance. And they'll be up for the Thursday game. They're up for tonight's Monday's game. And, uh, you know, uh, depends on bandwidth. And we, look, most important to get it right as opposed to get it first. And that's what we're doing by getting it up at least 24 hours ahead of time right now. And uh, we did pretty good on the scores in terms of predicting what was happening. Like Trent Brown's not going to play. Taylor Lewan's not going to play. You know, some guys that were and weren't going to play kind of deal and uh, uh, et cetera. But we have some breaking news here. Um, Andy Dalton's MRI is in, according to the rap report. Bone bruise confirmed. Bone bruise confirmed for uh, Andy Dalton. So that's good news. Not even a partial ACL. But it's bad news. Bone, bone, bone bruise confirmed. If you keep playing on a bone bruise, it's going to swell and it could get worse. He's out for multiple weeks. October at he'll, – he could return in October, but then – if Justin Fields is doing well, bye-bye, right? And if right. he's not, here's Nagy, let's go back. Mm -hmm. Let's go back. He was always a starter. Justin Fields, our long-term guy, he just isn't ready yet. He served us well out of need. Instead of he's a starter, he's not the starter. And there's no demotion for Justin Fields if he doesn't kill it. It's just what it was. Coaches right. are smart. <laughs> Well, another let's uh, our last quarterback. Let's hit on this quick doc uh, who could be out multiple weeks. Tyrod Taylor with the hamstring already ruled out for Thursday. Going to be Davis Webb. Uh, no chance we see uh, Deshaun Watson. The coach coach already said it. How long do you think Taylor could be out with that hamstring? Well, as a pocket quarterback, much quicker than as a run pass threat, right? And of course, he's a run pass threat, and it depends on how severe, but. Obviously, the quickest is week four, and uh, but we'll see. If he stays off of IR, that would be a good sign that it's shorter term. I'm a little disappointed. Uh, my wife and I actually headed down to Houston for some work business play and going to that game, but at least uh, CMC is going to play. But no Tyrod Taylor. Okay. Um, so, uh, I mean, he, he was playing pretty good, too, so that's a blow for the Texans. Uh, let's get – there's a couple other big injuries I want to get to before we hit the rapid fire. Um, 
fantasy owners all over the place going nuts. Dalvin Cook uh, hurt his ankle a little bit. Did do you think that's anything we have to worry about for next week? Dalvin Cook is tough. He plays through injuries. You remember mm-hmm. all the different yep. things. Uh, no doubt he's hurting, but I don't think he's injured. I think it's just week two going on week three, but he probably feels like it's week seven or eight already. I think that's where Dalvin Cook is. Don't be surprised if he gets a rest day or two, LP or two, but I would be surprised based on evaluating the video, once again, not his reaction to the injury that he could go and play. For example, I believe that Josh Jacobs could have played this week too, but the Raiders ruled him out. Why? They, they had Peyton Barber. They wanted Kenyon Drake to have a chance, and they're looking long-term. And they made the right call. They got the win anyways. Now, could the Vikings say, let's go Madison for a week? They could, but I think they're more likely to say, let's go Dalvin Cook. Uh, we need to turn this thing around. And, you know, we the Raiders had the luxury of being 1-0 and when they made that decision, where the Vikings aren't quite in the same boat right now coming off the Cardinals' loss. So I think Dalvin Cook will play and be effective. Uh, and uh, even though he may miss a little bit of practice time. Okay. Um, the most interesting injury for me, because you and I talked about this off camera, TJ Watt with the groin. Now, uh, Tomlin came out today and said, you know, there's a good chance he plays. Um, you might have a different take on this. Well, I guarantee you that he's able to play. The question is how well and what do they risk? Let's say it's a mild groin adductor strain and they pull them out out of precaution and MRI that. What risk does he have of making it worse on a speed move as he's trying to get around the corner? If he makes it worse, he might be out another three, four weeks or are they better off waiting one week? And I don't know the schedule off the top of my head. We can look at it in terms of divisional, this, that, the other, where's the bye week and the schedule manipulations. But that's a decision that they're going to have to make. Uh, but at least it's good news that it seems pretty clear he's not had. I mean, it, it wouldn't be impossible to go on a three-week IR for a groin strain, but that doesn't seem to be the case. So that's the good news. But I don't know that he's locked in for sure to playing this week yet or not. Yeah, and, and, and he's not the only groin now, right? Right. I mean, it's uh, Joe Hayden, Hayden and Bush. A groin and, and Devin yeah. Bush. I mean, wait. I mean, that that's a that's a pretty good uh, defensive lineup that's in the training room right now. Right. T.J. Watt, Devin Bush, and Joe Hayden. I mean, that's three of their better players. Yeah, and I, I, just to go by what you're saying, Doc, too. Like, uh, listen, T.J. Watt's tough as nails. We know he he'd go out there on one leg, but I would argue also the second most important defensive player in pro football. So, do you want to risk losing him for a month? So, that, you know, that'll be like you said, that's that three-headed monster, right? That we'll have to see how how that decision plays out in Pittsburgh. Um, this weekend, Packers next week. Bengals and then Packers uh, is what the Steelers have now. On the one hand, people would say, well, save them for the Packers. But let me tell you, as you know, that divisional game is more yeah. important to the Steelers than, than the Packers game. So we'll have to see what happens. Okay. Last one before we get into the rapid fire. It happened late. We don't have a ton of uh, news on it yet. Amari Cooper, rib injury. Um, in terms of, you know, you kind of talked about quarterbacks, a receiver. How, how does that affect them moving forward? Well, you know, believe it or not, you might argue that wide receivers have a harder time because their ribs are exposed and they could take big hits, but thankfully they don't happen as often anymore based on the NFL rules. But let me tell you, it's easier to play through at wide receiver than a quarterback because all of the twisting that you have to do to throw a ball. But once again, depends on how bad. And if it's not rib cartilage, just ribs, I think Amari Cooper can play through. Uh, the Cowboys physicians have always done a good job managing things and they'll be aggressive with the rib block. So I think he'll play through. I think the most curious one before you, maybe it's on your rapid fire is Deontay Johnson. Mm-hmm. Um, and that was interesting. What do we always say, right? Judge the injury, not the reaction yeah. of the injury. And because it was the quote, meaningless last play of the game, there was limited replay. I saw a lot of stuff and, and people tweeting at me, 
doctor so-and-so says, this guy says, it could be ACL, it could be MCL, it could be meniscus, it could be this, it doesn't look good. Uh, he shook his head when he uh, looked at Big Ben. No, uh, the body language is this, that, the other. And we were looking at the video saying, it's not great video. When he goes down to the ground, Jonathan Abrams shields the body. But when he's cutting, when he's in open field, and what we see, and we only had one angle, we don't see much. Does it mean he's not hurt? No, because it's hard to prove a negative. But the report this morning, and I had the most overnight chatter of anybody, and everyone, you know, it was, the silence is deafening. They have to know. It must be bad. And this morning, Mike Garofalo NFL Network says it's not a significant injury. Now, could it be uh, that he misses this week? It's possible, but it's not significant. Now, our crack staff here, uh, guys, Taylor, Jacob, et cetera, pointed out that in week one, if you go back and look at our posts whenever he collided with the player, banged knees, went down hard, limped off, and everyone's like, oh, he's done for the day. And we said, no, I think he can come back. He missed what, one plays or something? Two plays and, back. and came back. Is this still related? Is there some residual in the knee from banging knees? And, and because of that, you know, something got pinched right at the end, maybe, right? It was the same right knee that he was clutching. Was it out of worry or fear? Uh oh, I did it again, or something happened. It's the same knee that's been bugging me. I don't know. But let me tell you, I th I'm glad to hear it's not significant. And this is why we judge video of the injury. And we don't go. I hope uh, you listeners out there understood that I wasn't trying to avoid the question. I just don't want to get over my skis and say something where it's not based on analysis or video and just be speculating or guessing. I don't think that's why you guys follow or look at what I'm doing. I try and look at, do the analysis based on things as opposed to taking a guess. Yeah, and I think it's important too when you mention uh, judging the uh, you know the injury, not the reaction. And listen, everybody's pain tolerance is different too. You know what I mean? Everybody reacts differently. I mean, Jesus, if somebody punches me in the nose, I'm probably going to go down like a sack of potatoes. But MMA fighters get punched in the nose all the time. I mean, there's there's a different pain threshold for every human being, so it's important not to just look at that reaction. All right, you ready to go quick fire, Doc? All right, let's do it. All right, quarterbacks. Matthew Stafford doesn't look anything serious, but did nick that thumb a little bit, was shaking it. Any, any worries for you moving forward? Not when it's Matthew Stafford. A quarterback thumb always, but I mean, that happens more than we think. You know, he's had that happen before. That's a thumb that he had surgery on. In the second half, I don't know that he played as well. Maybe it had to do with the thumb, but I don't see how he doesn't start week three. Okay, Dak Prescott, two weeks after that, you know, ankle recovery. How, did you see him looking any better in the pocket, moving around? Yeah, I actually did. Uh, maybe it's he knocked the rust off. I thought he moved a little better this week and uh, did a little better this week. You know, I, I, I th thought he I thought he did. Look, he didn't put up the same numbers he did week one, but I thought he looked and played better this week in terms of how he moved and how he threw the ball. Now, he didn't have the same results, but he got the W, right? He didn't have the same stats as week one, but he got the W. I think he looked better. So that's encouraging. Okay, let's move on to running backs. Wait, is, there a, is there a more dangerous job on earth than playing running back for the 49ers? They're going to be calling you in, Doc, pretty soon to take a handoff. Um, the entire 49ers backfield is hurt. We know Mostert's out. Trey Sermon, concussion, Elijah Mitchell, shoulder, and Jamichael Hasty ankle. Out of those three, which one gives you the biggest concern moving forward? Biggest concern, obviously, Mostert. He's not coming back this year. Well, no, I mean out of the, yeah, the three that... Uh, out of the three that are... Out I think I would be, uh, uh, I mean, concussion, you just got to go through protocol. It's not even up to anybody. Uh, hasty with the ankle. I, I feel mo most comfortable with the stinger. He did return, though there is risk of recurrence there. Okay, so I feel most comfortable with Elijah Mitchell. But here's the thing. This is how crazy this is. I didn't notice this during the game, but I saw this this morning. Thomas, the 49ers are so, okay. Who's another team in the NFL that's really banged up at running back? Easy one. They played Monday night. Oh, the Ravens. Or sorry, yeah. Sunday night. The, the Ravens. Ravens. Yep. They lost all three starters. Mm -hmm. The Ravens waved a running back having these three starters go down. They waved a guy, and the 49ers picked him up on Wednesday of last week, and he actually got a carry in this game. So the Ravens jump heap, junk heap, and the Ravens are ravaged at running back. 
Yet the 49ers are so ravaged, they picked him up for special teams, and he actually got a carry this Sunday. Trent Cannon, right? I mean, that's so that's how banged up the uh, 49ers are at running back. But hopefully, like I said, Mitchell will play. Hasty has the chance. We'll see about Sermon. But it's a little patchwork right now at running back for the 49ers. Okay, and make sure to stop by and six scores for the 49ers running backs this week. Uh, we'll have all that covered this weekend. Uh, let's move on to our old friend, Austin Eckler. I feel like I talk about Austin Eckler more than my own kids since I started working here. Um, did he look, you know, he, he had a, he got that concussion late in the game. So obviously he's going to have to go through the protocol. In terms of uh, overall, how do you think he's looking? Well, well, let me just be precise here, and I'm not trying to correct you. He got checked for a concussion. Checked for a concussion. No, you're right. And he'll yeah. get checked again, but he passed the right. new medical tent head injury check and returned to the game. On that unbelievable one-handed catch where, where, where Van Der Esch was holding his other arm, he catches one hand, takes the hit. Unbelievable. But what do we say? We rate, Look, week one, we said, you know, he will he play? He might not. Are the, it's, it's a coaching decision. Do they want to save him or, or risk it? They played him. He did okay. Under 3.8 yards of carry, 15 carries. No pass targets week one. And we said this week with our sixth score, we elevated him quite a bit, saying he's going to get close to normal usage this week. And how many targets? Nine catches on nine targets, 61 yards. Nine catches, nine targets, 61 yards from zero catches on zero targets the week before. That's what we said going in on the six score. He's full usage this week. And going forward, I think he will continue barring something weird with head injury, whatever. So I think we can actually probably stop talking about Austin Eckler and treat him as completely healthy at this point in time. Okay, good. Um, uh, last uh, running back before we move on, uh, Daryl Henderson. Uh, Rams already down their starting running back. Henderson's been starting ribs. Um, concern moving forward? Well, I mean, looking at practice reports, definitely a concern. He's gonna, there's a DMP or LP multiple in his future, but rib block and let's ride. I think that's gonna ha- what's going to happen with Daryl Henderson. Look, uh, uh, yes, it's still painful for running back, but boy, uh, you know, I think he's going to go. Uh, okay, that's good news for the Rams. And uh, if not, Sony Michelle's there may be an increased workload from the trade with the Patriots late in the offseason. Okay, wide receivers. Uh, you know, Laviska Chenault in Jacksonville, the left shoulder, they had an MRI to see if there was a tear. Uh, coaches saying not serious. Do you agree? Well, it's not serious because it's not their shoulder, but by video, uh, it was a shoulder subluxation dislocation. He fell out on an outstretched arm uh, as he went out of bounds. Uh, he had didn't do much in the second half, but he returned. No targets. Uh, probably was wearing a brace. And but this is not a right-handed quarterback. This is a wide receiver with a left shoulder dislocation. Recent examples: Anthony Miller. It affects your output. It restricts your catch radius. So uh, we will wait further information, but uh, uh, expect a downgrade in the six score for LaVisca Cheneau. And what we mean is if he's projected to have 16.3 fantasy points, Mm -hmm. if we have him around 50 for a six score, and I'm not saying that's what his six score yet, we're going to do a little more evaluation. You you can only count on projecting about eight points for him because he's not as healthy. We're still working that out, but I can tell you there will be a drop in his six score for sure. Okay. Um, I want to ask you quickly about AJ Brown because he has the knee issues. I didn't think he looked all that healthy, like in terms, and then he kind of, he sent out a tweet joking that, uh, that a family member told him that he couldn't have caught COVID on Sunday, even if he tried, he had such a bad game. Are you seeing with him in terms of movement um, with those knees? Well, 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 Tom vaccinated? No, no, no. Bad joke. I won't go there. <laughs> uh, no, look, he's a young, dominant wide receiver who gets routine veteran rest. Remember week one when it was, oh, DMP on Wednesday. Uh-oh, what happened to A.J. Brown? And we're like, don't worry. This is his pattern. Uh, he's going to get some vet rest. Was his knee a little more sore this week? I don't know. 
I mean, is it the emergence of Julio in that game? They won. I mean, don't know. Bottom line is, this is the light and lot of A.J. Brown throughout his career. Uh, he's going to have to deal with his knee soreness issues. Had some off-season procedures, et cetera. But boy, I still wish I had him on my fantasy team, right? I mean, he's still a beast. Okay, let, let's move to the offensive line and, uh, and A.J.'s teammate, Taylor Lewan. So this was interesting because uh, he, he was a late scratch. They said they worked him out pregame. But working with you last week, you made the point that Lawan apologized to the fans after he got abused by Chandler Jones. And you said he shouldn't have apologized because he's out there playing injured, doing the best he can. So is this a new injury or is this a re-aggravation of what he had? What, what do you think? Well, I think it has to be related. Could he have had a minor setback? Maybe. But there's no way his knee wasn't swollen going into week one. There's no way he wasn't he was 100%. And I saw some video against Chandler Jones where he didn't even want to stick that right right foot into the ground. And so he's playing on one leg and no wonder Chandler Jones abused him. I think going into this week the team realized his shortcomings and also you know coming off playing your knee's going to swell after a first game and Taylor Lewan's a beast. He wasn't coming out of that game. He played all the snaps. This week they were more careful in pregame you know, I saw him in shorts and a t-shirt walking with quite a limp. I don't know if he reheard it, but the team knew there was an issue too. Why? It wasn't like they put him on the 46. He went out there in uniform, warmed up and aggravated or something happened. He never made it to the 46. He went out with shorts and a t-shirt with the trainer and the doctor and said, what can you do today? And they decided he can't today. Now, did he get re-injured or was there a setback or was he just swollen and sore? I can't tell you. But I still think it's part of the whole picture where you just can't expect. Look, David Bakhtiari is not back. I forget the exact time David Bakhtiari, you know, left tackle, et cetera, yet. And, and so I think it's reasonably heroic that Taylor Lewan tried. All right. So moving on, you know, the, we mentioned the 49ers running backs. The Eagles offensive linemen are another area that just are, always seems to have trouble. Brandon Brooks, uh, chess pectoral. Um, likely out for the year. Yeah, uh, that's one I admit. Jacob, remind me, we'll go look at the Game Pass video and then uh, we'll tweet or post at profootballdoc.com. That was my feeling, but that was also a game that we didn't get video on due to the direct TV stuff. So I couldn't give you, tell you for sure. Yes. Yeah. Ari Myra uh, says tech strain, um, not likely season ending. So oh, okay. So there is a report on peck strain. So hopefully that's the case. But uh, Brandon Graham, the two Brandons, yeah. one seems for sure tore a tendon, his Achilles tendon, Brandon Graham. Brandon Brooks, let's hope he's okay. Now, Brandon Brooks obviously has had his share of injuries, including Achilles tendon tears and so forth. So we'll go back and look at the video, hard to say. All right, moving on to the defensive side of the ball, some injuries in Denver. Uh, Bradley Chubb has been uh, – dealing with ankle issue, uh, seemed to re-aggravate that ankle in the second quarter, and uh, Josie Jewell, uh, MRI, confirmed torn pack, done for the year. Well, Josie Jewell, an emerging player, but I don't know that he's done for the year. Remember last year? It was the year before. Last year, J.J. Watt came back in the playoffs for Houston after he tore his pack. He wasn't fully effective, but he played. Uh, I mean, look, you have the Broncos are still in it and they have confidence in the rookie. He, there's a chance he could come back, but you're right. Most likely surgery season over. Bradley Chubb is just an extension. I'm looking at ESPN and looking at Baker Mayfield's shoulder dislocation again on, on the tackle. Uh, but in any case, um, uh, that's not an aggravate. That's a continuing issue. So with, since it's a continuing issue, you can't count on him to play week three. He, he, left you activated him you used a spot on him and he couldn't finish this is a season injury that came from last season you think by next week he's 100 percent? no way so he's going to miss at least this next week if not longer because you don't want to play two weeks in a row with 45. all right and uh, just one last one for everyone to keep an eye on we don't have video or anything yet but you know, Matt Judon for the Patriots is playing at an elite level uh, this season through two games, took himself out at 5.07 in the fourth quarter when the score was out of reach. There's really no word or anything, but just something to watch in terms of six scores moving forward. 
uh, we'll keep an eye on that injury as well. And that's a big deal because they're already down Stefan Gilmore and Kyle Van Noy this last week. But but when does Bill speak? I'm sure he'll tell us what's happening with Matthew. Yeah, the, I, Bill will probably give us a complete injury report in the next hour on Monday here. So uh, maybe, maybe maybe if you were a long snap for Ben Volan asked him a yeah. question and he, and, and, and uh, he went filibuster. I think well, he talked for the rest well, of the press conference. All and you know, you know, you know, I know that story because I asked him the same question years ago on uh, on, on our buddy. Uh, Lonnie uh, Paxson. On, on Lonnie Pax and he did the same thing. And after the after the press conference, I got yelled at by all the reporters. They said, "Don't ever ask him a question like that again. All he does is use it to take up the press conference time." So I, I walked into that same buzzsaw. Well, I, I I should I texted Ben after that. We were laughing. I said, "I guess I should text Ben and say stop copying my guy Thomas's questions." <laughs> yeah. That's what I'll, I'll text him from 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 now on. Well. Doc, it was it was a big week of injuries. Um, everyone appreciates your your quick analysis on them. Even with uh, we were a little shorthanded, we go. Uh, make sure everybody goes to profootballdoc.com. Check out our six scores. Follow us at profootballdoc. And in a couple of weeks, we'll have some uh, some big news to announce. Uh, some bigger things on the way. Um, Doc, thanks again. And uh, enjoy the time in Houston and enjoy the game. Yeah, let me know some comments on our new podcast format. I like it. And, uh, you know, uh, when I say comments, critique the heck out of Thomas, not me. Yeah. I'm just kidding. No, I'm just kidding. Say, no, seriously, uh, on, on uh, iTunes ratings, this, that, the other, uh, or just on Twitter, let me know what you think uh, about what you guys want to hear and see from us. And uh, thanks. Thank you, Thomas. Thank you, guys. And we'll sign off.